I hit it. I hit the final note. It's also the name of today's show. Welcome to Michael's Math Magic. I want to show you a tool today that's very special to me. These are regular old bicycle playing cards that are anything but regular. We here at Vsauce designed these to do something very special. They come in Curiosity Box 12, which many of you already have, and some of you, it's on its way to you. When you open the cards up, you'll find that you get 52 regular cards with really cool backs. Take a look. It's got ink on there with some nautical stuff, some ship's wheels and whales and pirate booty, as they say in the pirate trade. But I've been playing with these cards for a bit already. They're all shuffled up. Um, I'll shuffle them a few more times to really convince you that I don't know where any of the cards are. Um, and, and I'm being really honest at this moment. It doesn't matter what order the cards are in. And then the magic will happen, all right? Now, often a magician will be able to guess a card randomly chosen from a deck, right? A magician like myself, not today. No, 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 we're gonna go even further. Today, the person guessing a card chosen from this deck isn't even in this room. Where are they? Well, I will show you. We have taken Jack, who works here at Vsauce, and locked him away. I'm gonna use my phone camera to show you where he is. Follow me. We gotta leave the studio. Okay, there's Hannah. And let me just carefully walk through the dark, leave the studio. Wonderful. Okay, now where is Jack? Is he there? No. Where is he? Oh, maybe he's in the refrigerator? Oh no, of course he wouldn't be. That would not be safe. Sometimes he's up in the loft or he's inside the trash can. Not today though. Nope. Today we have locked him away, not in testing room B, but in testing room A. Jack, are you ready? Yep. All right, let's do this. Okay. So, let me make my way back. I want to do this all in real time. No edits. Real magic. Okay, going back into the studio. Hannah, I'm back, and it's time for us to use these special cards. Ready? ready? Here we go. I'll give him one more shuffle, and then I'm gonna pick a card out of the deck. Now, Jack has his phone with him, and I'm gonna text him, and he's gonna text me, and it will be through texts that the magic occurs. Here we go. Let's pick this card right here. I have no idea what this card is, and certainly Jack, who is not even in this room, and is actually as far away as he can be in this office, does not know what that card is. And I'm going to ask Jack to guess what this card is. Okay, so here we go. Ready? It's time to guess the card, Jack. Okay. Let's see what happens. Send. This is what happens when you try to do a trick in real time. There can be some waiting, but this is all part of the experience. You can feel the psychic energy between Jack and me and the card and the phone and Hannah a little bit. Whew, yeah. All right, Jack, can you do it? I don't know the card. How could he know the card locked away in a bathroom? Well, perhaps it's not a bathroom. Perhaps it's a throne of magic? King of hearts! Is this the king of hearts? The king of hearts! What? Excuse me? Let's try this again. Let's try this again. I have no idea which card is which. I'm gonna pick uh, this one. Okay. I don't know what it is. Jack certainly doesn't know what it is, but let's ask him to tell us what it is. Okay. Hello. Okay, Jack. Can you guess the card? I sent it. Ooh, I can feel that electricity. Now, Jack isn't the only one who can do this, and let me reassure you that this is 
a real, these are real texts. I'm not using some kind of special app. There are no additional cameras in this room besides the ones that are here and here. And uh, Jack is not listening to us. He doesn't have any kind of elaborate system of mirrors that allow him to look under the table from inside the bathroom. He really is in there with nothing but his dreams and his phone. And with those tools alone, Jack will think about what card this might be, and he will be able to miraculously be right. Nine of spades. Is this the nine of spades? There it is, the nine of spades. How the heck is this trick working? Well, it's time for me to let you in on a little bit of a secret. Jack knows what card has been chosen because I know what card has been chosen. And I tell Jack which card was chosen through code. The special thing about Ink's playing cards is that this isn't just a regular deck, it is a marked deck. Which means that by looking at the back of each card, you can tell what the card is. If you look at these three cards, they all look incredibly similar from the back. Only a trained eye, only someone who knows what to look for, can, upon close inspection, really determine the secret code on the back. What I want to do is, um, is there a pencil around here? Or any kind of sharp pointing object? Even, actually, Hannah, um, give me your friend. Thank you very much. Okay, take a look at the back of this card. We've got ship's wheels. Look at the ship wheel in the upper left-hand corner. It doesn't matter which uh, way the card is because the secret code is hidden in the upper left-hand corner no matter how you rotate the card. You'll notice that there's a ship's wheel with 12 handles. Those 12 handles can be read like a clock. When you look at them, you look to see if a handle is missing. In this case, on this particular card, no handle is missing, which means the card is a king. It's that easy. But what's the suit? Well, if you look inside the wheel, there's a line, and the line is thicker here on the right than it is anywhere else. By following typical chased order, which I introduced in the Sy Stibbins video uh, just a bit ago, you can, from 12 o'clock around, moving clockwise, tell what the suit is by looking at where the thicker line is. If it's thicker at the top, you have a card that is a club. If it's thicker on the right, it's a heart. Thicker on the bottom, it's a spade. And thickest on the left, it is a diamond. This ship's wheel is thickest on the right-hand side, which means this is a club heart. This is a heart, a king of hearts. And it is, in fact, a king of hearts. Let's look at this card. Now this card is missing a handle right there at the two o'clock position, so it's a two. And the line on the ship's wheel is thickest at the bottom, which, is, uh, which tells us that this is a spade, a two of spades. Boom. Let's do that one more time. Right here, perfect. Okay, so uh, looking at this ship's wheel, we see that the handle is missing at the 10 o'clock position. So this is a 10, and the line is thickest up at the top, so it's a club, a 10 of clubs. Piece of cake, right? Unless you know what to look for, though, this is incredibly hard to figure out. Of course, when you do a trick with these cards, you shouldn't just do it like this. Uh, hey, uh, uh, what's, uh, what's this card? Oh, uh, well, I can tell you it's the four of diamonds. <laughs> no, because it's too obvious. People will know that there's probably something telling you on the back. So I have today performed for you what I call the bathroom magic trick. And I use a code to convey what I know about the card because of what I can read off of the back, since it's a marked deck, through text to Jack. And here's how I do it. The identity of the card is contained in the text that I send him. The punctuation at the end of my text tells Jack the suit. If I put no punctuation at the end, that tells Jack that the card is a club. If I just put a period at the end of the text, that tells us that the card is a heart. A question mark at the end of the text says that uh, the card is a spade. And finally, of course, an exclamation point tells Jack that it is a diamond. 
So as you can see, the punctuation sort of, in my opinion, is going up in terms of the amount of emotion in it. And that's how I remember chaste order, club heart, spade, diamond, and the order of the punctuation. So Jack actually has a cheat sheet with him hidden in his pocket in the bathroom so he can reference it. I have to memorize this. And it's not actually that hard. You practice a few times and you got it down and the effect is really phenomenal. Okay, but uh, Jack wasn't able to just tell us the suit of the card chosen. He was also able to tell us the value. And here's how I work that out. If the card is an ace, I begin the card with no salutation. That's right, the salutation, the, the greeting in the text is how I tell Jack which three cards the card is. Here's what I mean. If, if I just begin the text uh, with no hello or hi or anything, then the card is an ace. If, however, I begin the text with the word hi, Jack knows that the card is either a two, a three, or a four. If I begin the text with hey, which is a little bit longer, he knows that the card is either a five, a six, or a seven. If I begin the text with the word hello, that tells Jack that the card is either an eight, a nine, or a 10. And if I begin the text with the word ready, that tells him that the card is either a jack, a queen, or a king. Here, what I think makes this easy to remember is that the greetings just get longer in terms of number of letters, the higher the card's value is. But now you may be wondering, all right, fine, but even if Jack sees the word hey and knows that there's, say, an exclamation point at the end, all he knows is that it's a diamond and that it's either a five, six, or seven. How do you tell him which of these three it is? Aha, well, what we're doing is using a little bit more secret tricks. Where I put Jack's name in the text, or really any proper name, tells him which of these three it is. If right after the greeting, I say a proper name, either his or maybe the participants or my own, whatever, he knows that of the three, the card is the smallest. So if I said, hey Jack, he knows right away that it's a five. If, however, I put his name or the participant's name at the end, for example, hey, guess the card, Jack, now he knows that it's the last card because his name was at the very end. If his name is anywhere else but the very beginning after the greeting or the very end, then he knows that it's the middle number. Hey, so uh, Jack, guess the card, that's a six. That's how it works. It's that simple. Let's do a couple of examples. In fact, let's see if he's still in the bathroom. He should be or else he's fired. Like literally, that's what his contract says. Let's just pick a card out of here and we'll do this one together. You can be the magician along with me. Okay, so no one's looked at this card. I haven't, you haven't, Hannah hasn't, Jack hasn't. Let's take a look. So this card is missing a handle at the three o'clock position and the stroke in the inside of the wheel is thickest up there at the top. So this is a club, a three of clubs. So for the three of clubs, what should we text Jack? Well, we know that the three puts us into this category of just using the short greeting, hi. And the three is in the middle of the two, three, four group. So we should say, hi, so Jack, or hi, we're ready, Jack, and then finish it with something. Um, so let me just start drafting this out so that we have it written down. And here we go. Hi, we're ready, Jack. Um, and then, uh, uh, what is it? It's, a, uh, it's of the club, so no punctuation at the end. Um, time to guess, all right? So there's the text. The, the word hi tells us that it's either a two, three, or a four. The fact that his name, the proper name Jack, is somewhere in the middle, not the beginning or the end, tells him that it's the three. And the fact that there's no punctuation at the end tells him that it's a club, three of clubs. I haven't even checked the card. That's how much I trust the markings on the back. Uh, I hope he's still like checking his texts. He may have gotten back to work, which is not acceptable. But let's see what happens. Obviously, you can come up with your own code. Use whatever works. Uh, best for you and your assistant. The more times you do this trick in a row for the same audience, the higher the chance will be that they can catch on and go, hey, every time it's, say, a face card, you're saying the word ready. Hmm. But if you only do the trick once or twice, you should really only do it once, by the way, um, for, for an audience. Three of clubs. He's texted back three of clubs. And is it the three of clubs? The three of clubs. Piece of cake. Now, 
These cards are amazing, but this show is not called Michael's Magic, it's called Michael's Math Magic. So here in the final few minutes that we have, I wanna just show you an awesome magic trick that I like to do um, because I married a woman from New Zealand, um, which is different than Australia, but pretty close to Australia. And this trick is called the Australian Shuffle, also known as the Down Under Deal. Down Under Australia, get it? Okay, perfect. So, a Down Under Deal is when you, instead of dealing cards like this, where each card goes down, you deal down and then under. Down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, and so on. Clearly, when you deal cards this way, you're dealing them off the pile half as quickly. But when you do that technique, you will eventually get yourself down to just one card left in your hand. And which card will be left in your hand is something we can know. The card that is left when you've done the down under deal over and over again, like this, down, under, 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 down. The card that you have left will have a known position in the beginning of the pile. And its position will be equal to this equation, this formula. You take the number of cards in the pack you're dealing, and you find the closest power of two that is not greater than that number. And you find the difference between those two. And then you double that difference. That will be the position in the pack from the top of the card that's left over. So for example, how many cards have I pulled out here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Ten cards. Okay, perfect. So we take ten, and we say, what's the nearest power of two that isn't greater than ten? Eight. What's the difference between eight and ten? Two. And what is two doubled? Four. So the fourth card will be the card I'm left with. The fourth card is the eight of spades. The eight of spades. Down, under, 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 down, ace of spades. Every time. Beautiful binary sorting. I love it. I've got links below where you can learn more about the math. Could you do it with a down, down, under? Would you need to use ternary? Ooh. I leave that as an exercise to you, the viewer. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>